guys, I'm uh, going to talk about media swing today, which is what fits in with Tommy Robinson quite well. Um, one of the things I recognise is even in the questions and answer responses relating to videos I've been putting out there, mentioning Tommy, is instantly it's racism. It, people are like, why do you want to talk to somebody that's a push of hate? Why is this? Why is that? Because it's called media swing. Everybody that has that viewpoint has simply ignored what he was talking about. Um, and I've seen it in the interviews. And it's what I was talking about with Reggie Yates. It's what I was talking about with the police related to the, the stabbings. Um, because it's deflection. And I'll just go through what I'm talking about because then it'll make some sense. My point with the video related to the BBC and the police and the London stabbings as they tried to make out that blacks were a victim of crime and not that they're part of the problem. Um, they are not focusing on the stabbings, they were trying to make out that the blacks were a victim because they're not getting enough media coverage. That was how it was being portrayed and pushed. And it completely ignored the relevance of who was stabbing the people and why. It just focused on, oh, poor person didn't get enough media coverage because then we're deflecting from the real problem. Tommy's getting the same thing. The most recent interview i seen, I, I think it was a journalist for the BBC, I'm not 100%, but the he was talking about the, the grooming um, by predominantly people from a certain background and they work as taxi drivers and the have been involved in a lot of child abuse etc when he mentioned this stuff it was then instantly deflected that don't white people commit the same crime and the answer to that is well not in the same way now the thing with that is Tommy sort of got drawn in to explain the differences that's not what we should be focusing on um, because that then becomes a deflection into racism because you're separating the two. And I know it sounds so weird, but this is how the media are playing things. What it should have done, especially if this was somebody from the BBC, as I go, you know what, you're right. And the reason I'm bringing it up is exactly the same reason. Is media suppression. It's police involvement and cover-ups. It is social organizations authority local authorities and stuff having their hand in it and covering up and none of them getting any um, arrest from their side knowing that this is full well going on when they should actually be looking at a minimum a slap on the wrist and their name dragged through the court system and you're probably going to think yeah well you're focusing on this because it's Asian men or whatever and I, I do get to the argument relating to Asian men because a lot of these people are still in Asia, it's, but it's done for the wrong reasons. <laughs> they, they know exactly which groups are doing this stuff. But when I bring this bit up relating to the covering up, the police, the local authority involvement, the BBC involvement, I'm talking about Jimmy Savile and how that's been deflected because everything got pushed onto uh, Cliff Richard. And then Cliff Richards obviously tried to sue the BBC, etc. And as such, everything around Jimmy Savile suddenly went quiet. Now, it's the same thing. It's media suppression. It's people being blindsided from the facts by moving things in a different direction by the media. It all went quiet after Cliff Richard. And... We're not seeing any prosecutions from the BBC beyond their entertainment list of B, B and C level uh, celebrities. But there was a lot more people involved. Jimmy Savile uh, committed three, nearly 400 um, acts of sexual abuse to kids and women. And yet only 19 people arrested. You can't tell me there wasn't a lot more people involved. And I, I do understand it's been spanning a long time period, but I'm sure right up until he died, he was still doing it. Because he was getting away with it. 
and he's obviously had the support of others to allow it to happen. There's been stuff going on in the hospitals as well where he was doing stuff as well. Why wasn't he even recognised as a threat to people in the local community? These are the questions I ask. And like I said, the deflection on that was straight to Cliff Richard. Let's, oh, they didn't get it all right. Uh, Cliff Richard's such a lovely guy, Christine, man, blah, blah, blah. Let's focus on that and move away from the problems and other people that were involved. It's the same scenario, media suppression and media swing, swinging away from the real problem. Um, it's the same as somebody brought up relating to stabbings in Scotland. I want to put my version of that on there. They are well aware of the crime in Scotland. They recognise the crime. They recognise it's a problem. They recognise that these problems come from the, a lot of the developments in Scotland um, related to things like Castle Milk, um, Easter House, Estates, etc. And as such, because they identified them as a problem, they began dealing with them. It's not going to be an easy fix. I mean, you cannot create jobs for an unskilled population in an environment that is proactively introducing robotics and computerized speech and emails overtaking a lot of basic jobs. Reality is, it's not an easy fix. But fundamentally, a lot of these developments had no bus routes, no shops, no jobs, and this bread, drugs, drink, and nothing to do. No options to get out of poverty, no options to even work sometimes. Um, so there has been a recognition of that problem and these concrete jungles that were built were actually a bad idea. As such, if you go to Easter House now, you'll see they've injected um, things like a localized shopping, um, they've knock down a lot of tower blocks and put in houses and stuff to change the appearance and environment. But that comes from recognizing the problem. And my point was related to the interview with the BBC and the police with London is they just went, oh, poor victim, we can't really blame these people. They're not getting enough media coverage. Yes, yeah, the same media coverage that is now ignoring the problem that stabbings are a problem. And that's the problem, media swing. And although people don't like Tommy Robinson, a lot of people don't like him, he's getting a lot of support um, because he understands that we are being sold false information. We're, the media is being skewed. Now, whether it's believed that it's all um, racially motivated to suppress a lot of that stuff, or quite simply, like I say with Jimmy Savile, He's a prime example of a white person that is a major problem in the environment. Uh, well, he's dead now, but he was a major problem to environments where there was children, um, teenagers, etc., etc. But fundamentally, the problems in society that has allowed Jimmy Savile to be suppressed, and also these guys that were grooming young girls, and we are not prosecuting the police. We are not prosecuting the housing authority, well, sorry, the local authorities that are involved in this. We are not prosecuting the media for suppressing information. Um, we are simply allowing it just to become a racial issue so that we don't have to deal with it. The same as London, the BBC and that interview was making it a racial issue and whether we should be supporting these people as a victim and not actually confronting the major problem that quite simply there is something seriously wrong when people think it's normal to go into say McDonald's and stab somebody. Um, there are some serious problems in the UK and that's my viewpoint on this. It's very simple that they're avoiding dealing with the problems. It's not all about suppressing people because they're from a different group. It's often down to the fact that they're just trying to avoid not doing anything about any of these crimes. Simple as that. A lot of the racial stuff I've seen around Birmingham when they show oh, racial attacks, they don't actually go into the groups are involved. They'll put racial attacks. But they won't mention that 
the groups are normally from Jamaican descent and Pakistani descent fighting each other because it doesn't suit it doesn't suit it's nice for the white guy to be the racist um, and I just want to push that out there because like I said it's the way the media are dealing with it which is my issue on all this and I do think that needs to be the focus and not getting drawn into trying to make it racial issues it's actually pulling out the information and facts and going well come on then show me how you can make this um, not a racial issue or a racial issue because all I'm looking at is the facts with London around 10% of the population is committing let's just call it a disproportionate amount of the crime in London that's a fact how are we dealing with it why are these people doing it is it that they come from a deprived environment is it that they are used to having crime in their environment and as such it's acceptable is it gang culture is it R&B music um, it's the same with NSW1 was it no N NW1 isn't it where all the credit card fraud gets committed and all the postal fraud gets committed specific groups do it and I'm not getting into that one because I'll leave that one for you to research but I think about three quarters of the crime relating to credit card fraud come from that area or was it might be have, may have changed all these figures are now skewed to make things look a little bit better but yet again it's particular areas particular people and the same goes for the people faking the citizen tests and people sitting in for the exams um, my simple view on that is you shouldn't be allowing anybody that hasn't lived in the United Kingdom for 25 years to even be involved in anything related to citizenship tests there shouldn't be any skewing by putting everything in whatever language just to accommodate or whatever because the whole point is that's not becoming part of a citizenship I come here to Spain they don't give me nothing in English I go to the, go to the foreigners office I speak Spanish I go to the salud, the clinic I speak Spanish the only place that does speak English and openly goes for it is Specsavers, which is obviously probably more popular with the expats here than it is with the local Spanish. Um, but ultimately, the integration is you have to do it. But I find the UK is often not that way. And it's often not focused on actually recognizing that some of these people that come from certain backgrounds are corrupt. And the fact is, they shouldn't be involved in the citizenship test because they have a British passport does not make them British. It should be a case of, for those types of jobs, 25 years minimum, and even better, if you can get some ex-civil service people on, that are retired or whatever, just looking for work to potter around with a few times a week, they're ideal for that. And the advantage you've got is they're less likely to be viable because they're on good pensions anyway um, but they just had the same happen here in Spain and I would hazard a guess it's the same same issues same people from the same nationalities because they're not hard to find these things you can see the patterns between different environments if you want a fake passport I bet you could list down which countries would actually give you a passport because culturally some of this stuff is normal but anyway, like I say, now I'm getting onto some of the racial things, but it's not racist. It's actually embedded, embedded, not embedded, embedded into cultures. It's normal. Same as like when I'm in the Philippines, people fly tipping on the neighbor's property. It's normal. People do it all the time. Yet in the UK, it's not normal. But I recognize people have their own cultures their own backgrounds and you cannot just pick the good bits and say the bad doesn't exist because if you mention it it's racist 
you've got to recognize that there is problems in all these societies and all these cultures because there is no perfect culture there is no um, utopian society out there there will always be conflict between different people because there is no bigger picture if this planet was dying and we we're trying to have the space race all that stuff would be put to the side for indefinite periods of time because there's a bigger problem but that's what I'm saying that ain't happening well, at least not a minute um, which is why people can focus on hating each other but anyway that's my point media swing media swing backwards and forwards don't mention a lot of the facts remove facts make th certain things look racist because it suits a political agenda like that with Tommy Robinson like a lot of the responses have had instantly he's a racist instantly the, the discussion is not around what's actually been going on whatsoever is deflected from that and instead focused on I don't like him he's a racist would your viewpoint change if it was one of your relatives that was abused probably should do um, and somebody else brought up about Africa and how that's a um, a white issue I would actually say right now you've Africa is predominantly being overrun by the Chinese business wise um, did the did the West actually do a lot of damage to Africa? I would say there's a lot, you have to take it from a good and a bad side. Infrastructure was designed for an outflowing economy in the sense of resources. At the same time, it did get infrastructure. It did get robbed of resources at the same time, but you're still selling resources to China and they're doing exactly the same thing, but they're in the East instead of West. Um, China's also, involved in a lot of things it shouldn't be if you look at Sudan and the oil there and who's using anti-aircraft guns on villages and the manufacturers of those anti-aircraft guns it gives you the bigger picture um, but fundamentally you look at South Africa it was a well-developed place whether people agree or disagree with apartheid that's that's one thing and this gets back to media swing. You've got a bad leader there. Very, very bad, very corrupt, and turning the country backwards. Um, is borderline Zimbabwe. And that's another one. All the infrastructure was put in. Whether people agree with white farmers or not is one thing. That's historical. It's gone past that. But when people are asset stripping and destroying the land and people are digging out, gold out of mounds of dirt to buy a loaf of bread you've got some serious problems there blaming whites for everything is very convenient and and for a long time it was correct but how can you look forward when you're always looking back how can you change things if your belief is that you can always blame somebody else for your problems when the problems are not in the, the people from the past now it's the people in front of you it's the people leading your countries it's the people that are stealing from your country's left, right, and center. And it's okay again. Well, they're getting money from the West. Guess what? They're your leaders. Get rid of them. Change them. Do something about it. Don't sit there and just think, well, as long as the white people are around, it will always be the white person's fault. And they're going, yes, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. Because it doesn't matter how much I steal from my own people. They're just going to blame the white man every single time instead of actually confronting the issue. I'm stealing like no tomorrow and nobody's stopping me. But that's for you to deal with. But all I'll say with that, it's the same as everything else we've discussed. It's media swing and deflection. You've got to recognize where the problems are and deal with it. And as I've said about my, my main things myself, I focus on the facts. I don't focus on whether I agree with Tommy Tommy um, Robinson or not. That's not the bit I'm interested in. It, the bit is, how is it being suppressed? Why is it being suppressed? And why do people instantly dismiss something 
because it makes things easier to sleep at night until it happens to somebody they know. Just something to think about. Thanks for watching.